Welcome to an epic showdown between celestial might and the primal forces of nature. Today, the Stormcast Eternals, led by the mighty dragon Krondis, face off against the Sylvaneth forest folk, commanded by Alariel the Ever Queen. In this battle of divine power versus ancient guardianship, the heavens clash with the forest in a struggle for supremacy. Welcome to the Realm Wars Network. The Stormcast bring a straightforward yet powerful concept to the battlefield. Leading the charge are two colossal dragons, Krondis, the Supreme Mage, and Ionus, a formidable priest. To ensure Krondis's survival, a unit of steadfast Praetor bodyguards stands ready. Supporting these mighty dragons are versatile and elite choices from the vanguard chamber. Long strike raptors deliver devastating ranged attacks while a full unit of paladors combines speed with a lethal charge. Completing the roster, six griffhounds provide a crucial screening unit, safeguarding the army from enemy advances. Alariel, the Ever Queen, commands a formidable forest folk battle formation, with her trusted Lieutenant Belthanos by her side. The army boasts a large unit of Kurnoth hunters armed with scythes, ready to repel any who dare charge them. Supporting them is a unit of Kurnoth hunters with bows, offering a potent ranged threat. To bolster their ranks, a reinforced unit of resilient dryads stands ready to endure the fiercest battles. Additionally, a unit of tree revenants provides tactical flexibility, teleporting across the battlefield to seize objectives. The battle plan is close to the chest, a strategic scenario where every turn the non-active player selects one of their home objectives to become the primary target, worth an additional two points. This dynamic incentivizes the active player to engage where the enemy is strongest, creating intense and strategic skirmishes around these key points. The Stormcast Eternals finish deploying first and opt to let the Sylvaneth take the first turn. The battle tactic is to seize the center. Both the Dryads and the Vanguard Raptors select the priority target seasonal buff. The Stormcast designate their right objective as the primary objective. Belthanos uses the Nature Etheric ability to transform the terrain in front of him into a place of power which Alariel activates, gaining a plus one bonus to her casting rolls. The Ever Queen summons an additional Wildwood and brings forth the Incarnate. For her final spell, she casts Wrathful Spirits to grant her units a bonus to hit rolls near the central tree. Krondis attempts a magical intervention but fails to summon the Purple Sun. In the movement phase, the Dryads advance forward. The Kurnoth Hunters move to the center and the Bow Hunters teleport there. Both heroes remain centrally positioned in the back safely behind the Kurnoth Hunters. The Raptors attempt to redeploy out of range of the Bow Hunters but roll a one, leaving two Hunters still within shooting range. In the shooting phase, one Bow Hunter targets Ionus, dealing four damage. The other two Hunters kill two Raptors, the Raptors return fire, successfully killing a bow hunter. The Sylvaneth control two objectives, complete their battle tactic, and score six points. The battle tactic is to take their land, in this case the mountain on the left flank. The primary objective is the central Sylvaneth home one. In the hero phase, Krondis attempts to summon the Purple Sun again, but is unbound. He then casts Starfall on the Hunters with scythes and subtracts one dice from their charge rolls. 
Ionus prays to generate six prayer points and then banishes the incarnate, dealing six wounds to it. The raptors rally two models back. The bow hunters also rally their lost model back, completely undoing the last turn's shooting damage. In the movement phase, Crondis flies on the left flank to claim the objective. The Paladors run towards the right flank, as with their speed, they can easily threaten the center of the board again. The Raptors move a bit further back to stay in range of the Bow Hunters. The Praetors arrive from the sky and cover Crondis. Ionus flies forward to threaten to bow hunters. The bow hunters redeploy four inches and get out of the range of the raptors. In the shooting phase, Crondis fails to hit the dryads. Ionus hits the bow hunters and deals four damage. At the end of the turn, the hunters heal. The Stormcast control their three home objectives and complete their battle tactic for eight points. The Sylvaneth win the priority roll and take the turn. The primary objective switches to the left Stormcast home objective, which is currently controlled by Crondis. The battle tactic is to take their land on the summoned tree on the right flank. In the hero phase, Alariel activates the nearby place of power for plus one to cast rolls. She then summons a third tree, the Wrathful Spirits, and the dwellers below spells on this tree are unbound. Ionus considers to teleport towards the nearby tree with his prayer to deny the battle tactic, but he will likely be bullied by the Kurnoth if he attempts that. Instead, Crondis casts the shackles, but he gets unbound. In the movement phase, the Dryads run towards the Praetors. The Kurnoth uses CP to run six inches. The Bow Hunters move forward to threaten the Raptors again. The Cronspine threatens the right flank. Alariel stays in the center while Belthanos is wary of the Paladors and stays in the back. The Raptors attempt to avoid the Bow Hunters again, but again redeploy one inch only. In the shooting phase, Alariel's spear deals one damage to Crondis. The bow hunters kill two raptors. The raptors cover fire and kill a Kurnoth as the closest unit. In the charge phase, the Kurnoth have to charge on a single dice and need to roll a five to complete their charge. They fail their charge even after the re-roll. The dryads charge the praetors, the incarnate charges Ionus. The Dryads kill a Praetor and deal two damage to Crondis. Ionus then kills the damaged Incarnate. The Praetors and Crondis kill only six Dryads. The Sylvaneth control two objectives, complete their battle tactic and score six points again. The battle tactic is to kill the Dryads as target of the Slay the Entourage tactic. The primary objective is the right Sylvaneth one. The Stormcast have to be careful in this turn as they have no command points left to use and the Dryads are hard to hit and wound. In the hero phase, Crondis summons the Gravetide, the Atavastic Tempest spell, 
which lowers the Kurnoth armor save, is unbound. Ionus uses his first prayer to heal wounds. The second prayer stores two points. In the movement phase, the Palladors and Ionus threaten the Sylvaneth center. The Raptors get in range of several enemy units now to avoid being without a target this turn. The Griff Hounds arrive from the sky to steal the left top objective. In the shooting phase, the Raptors deal 8 damage to the Dryads. Ionus's Dragonfire kills one bow hunter. In the charge phase, the Paladors roll an 11 and decide to use their charge bonus to take on Alariel herself. Ionus follows into the bow hunters. The Grave Tide fails its charge into the Dryads. In the combat phase, the Paladors strike the Everqueen and deal 8 damage to her. Alariel attacks Ionus, dealing 6 damage to him. The Stormcast Priest returns 3 damage only, leaving the Queen on 5 health. The Dryads deal 1 damage to the Preators, who deal no damage back. The Bow Hunters deal 2 damage to Ionus, leaving him at 6 health. Krondis finishes out the combat by wiping out the Dryads. Alariel heals for one wound. The Stormcast control four objectives, but not the primary one and score eight points. The Sylvaneth win the priority roll and take the turn. The battle tactic is attack on two fronts where the player needs to claim two objectives. The primary objective stays on the left Stormcast side. The hero phase, the dwellers below, are cast on the Paladors for two damage. Metamorphosis and Wrathful Spirits fail to be cast. Alariel heals three wounds. The very damaged Ionus is praised for a translocation and teleports behind the right most objective to deny this as easy picking for the Sylvaneth. In the movement phase, Belthanos moves out of cover to take the top left objective. The Kurnoth runs six inches towards the Raptors. Alariel attempts to use the Rite of Life to summon back the destroyed Dryads but fails to roll a four or higher. The Raptors redeploy to their board edge. In the shooting phase, the Bow Hunters kill a Palador. The Raptors use Covering Fire but deal no damage. In the charge phase, the Kurnoth attack the Raptors, but they also want to steal the central objective and therefore only three models get into combat range. Belthanos charges the Griffhounds. In the combat phase, Alariel goes first and takes out one more Palador. The Palladors fight back and bring the Everqueen down to one health only. The Kurnoth kill only one Raptor. Belthanos kills four Griff Hounds. The Raptors, as well as the Bow Hunters, deal no damage. At the end of the turn, Alariel uses Strike and Fade to teleport to the top right corner. The Sylvaneth control four objectives and complete their battle tactic for eight points. The battle tactic is to reclaim the realms. The primary objective is in the top right corner. In the hero phase, Krondis reduces the charge range of the Kurnoth again with Starfall, and then reduces Belthanos' armor, save by one. Ionus heals for three points. Alariel heals back up to eight health. In the movement phase, the Raptors retreat away from the Kurnoth and lose two models, leaving one left on the field. 
The Paladors also retreat and one dies. The Lone Raptor uses the teleport from the battle formation to move to the top central objective. Ionus moves to the place of power on the right and Krondis threatens Belthanos. The Grave Tide moves towards the center. In the shooting phase, Krondis shoots Belthanos for five damage. Ionus shoots the bow hunters for three damage. The Lone Raptor shoots Alariel in an attempt to keep her health not go back to full again and deals three damage to her, so she is back down to five health. In the charge phase, Krondis takes on Belthanos. Ionus fails his charge on the bow hunters, but the Paladors make it. In the combat phase, Krondis takes out Belthanos. The bow hunters deal no damage and succumb to the Paladors. Alariel heals for two points again. The Stormcast are in each table quarter for their battle tactic, control four objectives and score eight points. The battle tactic is to slay the entourage, which is the last raptor. The primary objective is in the lower left corner. In the hero phase, Alariel has no good spells to cast. In the movement phase, the tree revenants teleport on the lower right objective. Alariel uses the right of life, but no unit returns. The Kurnoth move up to the grave tide. Alariel moves to the center of her own table edge. Ionus redeploys five inches to remain in control of the objective. In the shooting phase, Alariel kills a Palador. She then proceeds to charge the Raptor. The tree revenants charge Ionus in a desperate attempt to kill the damaged dragon. The Kurnoth take on the grave tide. In the combat phase, one Palador dies from the nearby Wildwood. The Tree Ravenants deal three damage to Ionus. The Grave Tide deals one damage to the Kurnoth. Alariel kills the Raptor. The Kurnoth kill the Grave Tide. Ionus takes out the Tree Revenants. Alariel heals one health. The Sylvaneth control three objectives and score six points. The Stormcast decide that the Ever Queen clearly is a tyrant and make it their battle tactic to slay her. The primary is the top right objective. It is Iona's finest hour. Krondis casts the Tempest to reduce Alariel's armor, but Starfall is unbound. Ionus prays to teleport to Alariel and heals two health. The Stormcast use the Heaven Sent command to return three Raptors. Alariel casts Metamorphosis but fails to roll high enough. In the movement phase, Krondist moves towards the Ever Queen. The last Palador also moves towards the Sylvaneth territory. Alariel redeploys to get a bit more distance to Krondis. In the shooting phase, Ionus deals four damage to Alariel, bringing her to nine wounds left. Krondis shoots but misses. The Raptors decline to shoot, as for the battle tactic, Alariel has to die in combat. In the charge phase, both Dragons and the Palador make their charge on the Ever Queen. In combat, Krondi kills Alariel. The Stormcast control the primary objective and complete their battle tactic for 10 points. At this point, the Sylvaneth have only the Kurnoth left on the field and can't see a way to make up the points difference on their last turn. 
the Stormcast win this game, which could have easily turned the other way. If the Kurnoth had made their charge on Krondis in turn two, the balance of power would likely have shifted significantly. The Dryads were one of the upsides on the Sylvaneth side, holding up the big dragon for two turns, while Belthanos was very vulnerable and did not achieve much, for the Stormcast Krondis carried a lot of weight turning the left flank by himself. The Vanguard Raptors are one of the best units in the book, and their heavy shooting took their toll on the opponent. Ionus, on the other hand, had to be quite careful once he took a good amount of damage, as his healing was not as strong as hoped to bring him back into a less risky state. We hope you enjoyed this battle on the Realm Wars Network.